Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And uh, you guessed it. We have yet another amazing guest on the show this morning. Um, I am so excited, as I always am, to talk to uh, this morning's guest. Uh, she's got a wide variety of experience and lots of different things before online marketing. And uh, since she started this, this journey, this venture online, uh, she has uh, grown a following, um, you know, interacting with her audience and her followers, uh, letting them know, you know, what it's going to take to be able to, to build a business of this nature, uh, what they can expect. Also talking about uh, uh, the joys and, um, you know, some of the benefits as well along the way and just creating content, delivering value. Uh, with that being said, my friends, please welcome to the show this morning. I want to back in here being in and uh, banners here this morning. And if you would, please, uh, please welcome to the show this morning our guest. Go ahead, bring her on. Kelsey, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, on my phone here, feeling a little out of control because I don't have my normal touchscreen buttons that I have on my computer. But that's oh. the be that's the benefit of of uh, you know doing this kind of thing is that we can kind of take it wherever we go. So how are you this morning, and where are you calling in from? I'm good. I'm calling in from Central Ohio. <laughs> Central Ohio, wonderful. wonderful. Well, hello from Florida. Um, so, so good to be connecting with you this morning. Um, so, uh, you know, what, uh, what is your past experience and what is the main motivation for you to want to, uh, sorry, you're cutting out a little bit there. I said, what is your, what is your, I said, what is your past experience with work? And what's your main motivation for wanting to build an online business? Yeah, so um, like you had said, I are in the the main highlight there. I've done anything from farming. Um, I worked on dairy farms. I worked on horse farms. This was years ago as I was kind of entering the workforce. Um, we live in a very small town, rural community. So farms are all over the place. Um, here recently, I would say in the last 10 years, I've done more like customer service, um, office work, front desk type of work, which I loved. I loved being, you know, the first face that people saw when they came into the office. Um, I found that I was very good with people. I could talk to people. I could talk on the phone. I could communicate very well with people and I enjoyed it. But also that's a very draining, <laughs> it's a very draining job when you're, you know, putting in 40 plus hours a week, dealing with customers all day long, you come home and you're just like, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I totally understand that. Um, it, it may also not nowadays provide, uh, you know, really enough pay to, to, to get ahead, I would assume, um, customer, customer service uh, in small town businesses. Um, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know what the average salary for somebody like that is, but I get it. So, um, what, have you tried anything online before? Have you dreamt or thought of starting a business online before? Or is this your very first time trying something like this? This is my very first time. Um, oh. so I had quit my job, my front desk job a little over a year ago. Just because, like you said, you know, the pay, I was putting in all these hours. I wasn't making money. I was never getting ahead. And I was just thinking there's got to be more to life. There truly has to be more than this. Um, 40 hours away from my kids and my home and just always feeling like I was behind. So I quit my office job about, uh, it was December of 2022. And I started my own house cleaning little side gig, which was great. It actually picked up very quickly. I was busy. I was, you know, making money, but also that was physically draining. <laughs> um, and that's when I kind of was like, okay, I feel like 
I'm being called to do something else. Like I'm being called to step out, do something I've never done. And that's when I found the $7 course and here I am. <laughs> nice. Nice. And so as you, as you started that journey inside of our education, what, what drew you to it? I mean, what, what light bulbs went off as you were watching those videos? What value did you get right away that made you feel like this is something that you actually wanted to pursue? Yeah. So I think it was even in like the first few days as I was watching these videos and this excitement grew in me, like just my mind was open to the opportunities and the possibilities that there are to, you know, be online and be in the online space and make significant money, but also be a part of a community that is always encouraging. And it just, I was just, my mind was blown with all of the, the value and the information. And I was like, I could do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you, did, what were some of the main things that you, that you utilized or that were valuable to you at the beginning? At the beginning, um, as far as like the $7 course or? Yeah, I mean, just feeling, you, you mentioned the community. I mean, was there anything, say more about that or, or uh, did you um, have positive interactions with any of our advisors? Did you, um, did you get certain inspiration from uh, something else? Uh, what, what was just valuable that helped you to feel supported? Yeah, so when I started the $7 course, uh, the support was amazing. Your guys' team is amazing. Um, whenever I needed to reach out with any questions, it was like immediate response, and I loved that. Um, and then once I got into like the Facebook group and just seeing the community, not only of other affiliates, but your team, it was just, it was so uplifting and encouraging that normal people like me could really grow a business with the help of your team, with the help of the community that you stood behind. Yeah. So what, and that's, that's wonderful. What limiting beliefs do you think you had to deal with in order to get started with this? What were things that popped up that told you, you know, maybe whether you were vocalizing them or not, that maybe you can't do this, or maybe this is not something for you. I mean, what, what have you overcome mentally in terms of your beliefs in order to even get launched in the first place? I think for me, it's like, I knew that I could do it, but I was like, but can I <laughs> like in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm just this ordinary mom from a small town. I, you know, I live in an old farmhouse and there's nothing glamorous about me or my life. Like, can I get on camera? Can I, create content? Can I put myself in front of thousands of people? Can I do this? And then I just had to stop myself and say, you know, you can do this. Like you, you don't think you're someone special, but like God put you here for a reason and you can absolutely do this. <laughs> there you go. You know, we don't think someone's special until sometimes someone special says that we're special. <laughs> um, meaning that, you know, sometimes getting out there and putting ourselves out there and getting positive feedback and validation from people um, is is oftentimes the 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 light bulb that goes off that makes us realize that we're we're capable of delivering value, and right. that's obvious, right? If people were saying, "Hey, you're not giving value," um, we would need to adjust. We should listen to that, but right. um, but uh, but I'm I'm I'm. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you were able to, to find that initial motivation and see in yourself that you uh, were um, not only, not only uh, capable, capable and, and uh, had the potential. So what was it like to go from learning and mentally beginning to believe to actually launching in going to post your first video, going to make your first public move and create your first piece of marketing content? It took me a minute. <laughs> um, once I had, you know, learned everything and set up my systems and had my, my Instagram page made, I think it took me a week and I was like, all right, tomorrow I'm going to do it. Tomorrow I'm going to start posting. And then tomorrow came and I was like, uh, okay, tomorrow. <laughs> I think I put it off for probably a good week because I just, 
that nervousness sets in. Like, what are people going to think? Are people that I know, are they going to see me? Are they going to judge me? But then I had to just kind of push that aside and say, you have to stop caring what people think. People, they don't pay your bills. They don't run your life. Like, you have to stop caring what other people think because ultimately it doesn't matter. And if they're going to judge you, then they're probably not your people anyways. So... Mm. Yeah. And it, did that fear come true? Did you receive judgment? Did you receive criticism or was that all in your head? It was all in my head. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, my family and friends have been so supportive. Not everybody understood what I was doing at first. They were just, you know, kind of confused. Like, all right, you're starting this online business. Just not really sure of what it was. But no criticism, no judgment, nothing but kindness and encouragement. And that's that's super helpful. Yeah. So um, these obviously these skills that we teach, we, we call them transferable skills, transferable business models. For anybody who's new here, what our main focus of teaching is the core four ways to sell information online. And that can be done in a variety of different niches. I mean, health, wealth, relationships, um, and there's tons of subcategories within those main niches. What was the um, your simple wealth with Kells? Um, obviously, you're not married to that niche. You, you you can switch it up. You can you you likely are already adding different products, tools, uh, offers to your business. Um, and I'd like to know here in a moment, or you can, of course, tell me uh, all with this. Why did you start here in the wealth niche? And what? how do you see yourself expanding with these skills in the future? Sure. So I chose the wealth niche just because I knew it was one of the evergreen niches. And also, I wanted to be able to help people like myself, people who are looking for a better way, people who you know want to step out of that normal nine to five rat race, you know, just I wanted to be able to help other people, other moms like myself. So that's kind of why I chose the wealth niche to to help other people step out of their comfort zone and start their own online business. And this is how I knew that you could do that. So so have since starting and since kind of looking out in the internet and seeing this, these business models and these strategies being used in, in countless different niches with countless different products. Um, just yesterday, for example, I was talking to our guest about her realizing how every product she used, uh, you know, she started to go look if there was an affiliate program to see if she could, uh, you know, uh, integrate it into her content. And as she was sharing, for example, different get ready with me videos. She was doing those before she even started with, uh, w with what she's doing now. And she would now looks at, you know, beauty products and makeup and fashion and all this different stuff. If she's going to share it with somebody, she might as well see if there's an affiliate link or program that she can get compensated for, for making those referrals. Are, are, have you started to kind of see the internet in a different way and, and kind of feel more empowered to, um, monetize, you know, lots of different things in ways that you hadn't before? And do, do you plan on continuing to expand? Yeah, absolutely. So I love health and fitness. I love working out. I love all things health and fitness. So I thought, wow, I could take these skills and I could do something in that niche and, you know, show my life as a, a mom who's, you know, in the gym and all the, the, the protein shakes and all the health you know, supplements, things that I could promote and I could just, I could build a whole business with the skills that I learned in the health niche. I've, I've honestly already started thinking about that. Love it. Love it. I, I want everybody as you're listening to, and if you're brand new to really understand the true power and definition of transferable skills and how they're different from so many education experiences that you may have had in the past where you learn one thing about a specific trade um, and, and it doesn't really translate over into another trade or another occupation. 
Um, if you go to school to be an accountant, that doesn't translate over to, to, to medicine. If you go to school, even in closely connected uh, trades like plumbing, and I know as a former construction worker, that doesn't really translate over into carpentry. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen um, or been a part of a construction you know, if the plumber, the plumber bangs a hole in the wall, he doesn't patch it because he doesn't do that. Right. That's the plaster guy. Right. Um, uh, you know, same with electric. So the, the, those skills don't translate over into the next trade, into the next occupation. It is a completely different occupation. It is a completely different trade. And so with these skills, learning them once allow you to tr transfer them over into different niches. Now, having the knowledge about that niche is required it, or, or partnering with somebody who does, but the marketing and the, the application of those, of those um, selling those products is, is, um, is very much the same. And quite frankly, uh, affiliate marketing in most cases requires no specific or expert knowledge about the product because you're not even the owner of the product. Now, if you get into course creation, coaching and events, certainly, especially if you're going to be the coach, you'd want to have that specific product knowledge. But with affiliate marketing, you do not, you do not need that. So it truly is a transferable skill that allows you to, you know, take this in whether you get bored whether a certain niche that you launch doesn't work out the way that you want it, or it's not as profitable as you want it, or it doesn't feel like a fit after you get started, you can transfer those skills into another niche almost seamlessly. And oftentimes, many of our clients do find that they're passionate about something else, another niche, rather than the one that they started. Um what have you learned about yourself along this journey? I mean, how is this, how has this taught you new things about Kelsey that you either didn't know or you had forgotten? I think I have grown more confident in myself. I feel like when I became a mom and maybe other moms can relate, I feel like you, you kind of lose little bits and pieces of yourself as you become a mom and you just kind of get lost in that, hustle bustle and that just mundane of motherhood and work life and you just you lose bits of yourself and I feel like this business has brought me back to life like I, I just feel like me like I'm confident and I feel like I can I can do anything <laughs> good for you good for you uh, and you, are you finding out that you can? Is is that something that you really is? Is you're realizing that you are mu much more capable than than you realized, and that it, obviously it's it's awkward to be new at things, especially the older that we get. But um, is it is it has it also been enjoyable for you to start something new and learn something new? Yes, very much so. I feel like my mantra has been like, okay, you have to you have to get a little uncomfortable to grow. You're you're not going to go anywhere or you're not going to grow if you just stay where you are. So you have to be a little uncomfortable. You have to put yourself out there, and I'm finding that as I do that, it's more easy for me to take the next step and be be a little more uncomfortable and be a little more uncomfortable and just that's how I am growing and learning and becoming more confident. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your account and marketing and sort of your your audience growing. What has that journey been like? What um, uh, we've got a couple of questions in here that we'll knock out real quick and that'll uh, help us to segue into that. Um, Sean says your videos, Kelsey, or your video thumbnails look so vibrant and bright and professional. Do you use your iPhone or an app like Wistia or CapCut before posting? I just use my iPhone. I make all of my videos in the Instagram app. Um, as far as lighting, I use, I have a lot of natural light in my house. So I use that and I do use a ring light if I need it, if it's like a dreary day outside. But no, I make everything in the Instagram app. Yeah, well, 
that's wonderful. And I think so often we have a tendency to try to overcomplicate things. Have you tr- have you had your phase of overcomplication in terms of tools or thinking that you need to over edit or overproduce videos? And and how did you how did you deal with that? Overcome that? Come back to something that was actually productive? To talk to us about if that was an was an issue for you. Oh yeah, and I mean I think it's still kind of an issue. Some days I overcomplicate just making content in general. Like I feel like it has to be so fancy and so elegant. And sometimes the simplest, shortest little clips of me sipping my coffee or holding my water, those are the ones that tend to go really big. Um, So I think for me, a lot of days I'm like, okay, just simplify it. Just the simple videos is what people want to see your real life. Just don't, don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to overthink it. Just simplify it. Mm. So um, what what are one or two things in terms of, um, you know, actually getting to a point to where you could get content out that has been helpful for you? Um, do you have a specific a routine? Do you have a specific um, system that you use in terms of, you know, having your ideas ready to go? Um, what, what works for you to help you actually create content from idea to getting it posted? Yeah. So I typically sit down like once a week and I go through, um, just my explore page and I, I find videos with, within my niche and even outside of my niche that I, I like the, the idea of, and I get ideas from those videos and I make a list of kind of what I want to create or recreate. And then I try to take like one day a week just to knock out 10, 12, 15 videos. That way I just have them in my back stock. And then each day I'm editing and um, captioning for the next day. So I try to have my videos ready for the next day to post. Gotcha. And how, how, um, how do you fit this into your life? What is your, what is your work times look like? How how do you manage your time? Yeah. So I usually spend about two hours a day working. Um, I do have some, my daughter's in kindergarten, so she's in school all day. And my little boy, he goes to the sitter just for a few hours in the morning so I can get some work done. So I typically hop off to the gym first thing in the morning and then come home and I spend about two hours working before I have to go get my little boy. So about roughly two hours a day is what I spend working, whether it be sending emails or getting my content ready or that kind of thing. Now, what about replying to people's DMs? You you mentioned that kind of connecting and being available to answer people's questions and connect with them. Is, Is that something that you're also doing sporadically throughout the day? Yeah. Yep. Whenever I see things come in, if when I get a minute, I respond to DMs and emails. I feel like the quicker you're able to respond, the better people connect with you. And I've even had people tell me that, like, you're the first person to respond to me. Thank you so much. So I, I love having that connection and letting them know I'm a real person. Like, I'm here to help you. I'm not just going to give you the info and say, see you later. Like, I want to be here to help them and guide them when they need that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what what do you think has been one or two of your top tips uh, or or success um, secrets, if you will, to kind of building your following up to nearly 100,000 followers on Instagram? I think for me, it was just showing up as myself. So I started a different Instagram account back in October. And I had that for a few months and it was just really slow. I wasn't seeing much progress. And I think it's because I was struggling to find who I was. I was struggling to find my confidence. So when I started over my new account, the one that I'm on now in January, I was like, I'm just going to show up as myself. I'm going to show up excited as my full self and we'll see how it goes. And I think that alone has just made it take off because I'm just being my real self and I'm, I'm showing, you know, what I have to offer and the excitement that I bring to my videos. I just think that's attractive to people when you can be authentic and be excited and show that joy for what you're doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, 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 how did you get more comfortable? I mean, what was the thing that helped you to get more comfortable in your own skin, you know, for, to go from version one where you were, and I went through this too, where you were, you know, trying to be something that you were not or felt that you needed to be a certain way or you were comparing yourself to others and that, how did you get comfortable in your skin? Was it, or get more comfortable to where you could be more authentic? I think it was just showing up and staying consistent and, Practice makes perfect. I mean, the more I did it, the more I talked on camera, the more. <laughs> yep, just the more I did it, the better I got. And then I was like, okay, I'm doing this thing. Like this, this is me. And I now I feel like I'm I'm actually doing it and I'm I'm getting good at it. <laughs> Well, sometimes we're looking for the big burning bush, you know, we're looking for the what's the secret, you know, and it's like, well, um, ready for it. Brace yourself. <laughs> Practice. Practice. Practice makes perfect. It's sort of like sort of like having kids. Right. You know, the, your first child, you're carrying them around. You. Oh, my God. You know, don't want to break it. Don't want to. You don't don't want to hurt it. Want to want to take, you know, by the by the second, you know, you're kind of like, yeah, here he is. Take by the third, you know, and I just I cut my mother comes from a family of five. I've got three. By the third, you're like, you know, ain't here. By the fifth, you're like, who's got the kid today? Huh? <laughs> We're throwing them around to each other. It'll be OK. You know, it's like we loosen up. We realize that we can make mistakes on video. We, we yeah. realize that, um, you know, our human features are, are actually celebrated uh, and that the more kind of authentic we are. And, and again, same with raising a child. I mean, if you baby the child, you coddle the child, it doesn't do the child any good. The child's got to right. experience life, you know, so we can't coddle our business or try to uh, control it too much. Right. Just kind of got to put the stuff out there and and see what happens, which is a risk. Right. That Absolutely. is a risk. How, how have you dealt with that anxiety of putting yourself out there and and um, and, and trying not only the first time, but also trying new things that maybe are a little bit edgy that make you a little bit nervous or uncomfortable to, to say or do. Um, but they may be. And I mean, what I mean by that is being a little bit more extravagant or emphasis in your personality or how you're saying something. Or for me, of course, it might be something like throwing my hat or ranting or raving or whatever. You know, those things are, you know, that could be per perceived as you know, this guy's off his rocker a little bit. But <laughs> lo and behold, people love to watch me ranting and raving and getting all crazy. You know, how did you deal with that with that kind of anxiety of of taking those risks in your content and doing things that are a little bit outside of your comfort zone? I think I just had to tell myself that people don't want to see like the same thing. People want to see you be different. So step outside the box, do things differently. People love to see that. Just like you said, with you throwing your hat, people, people want to see that, that mix up that, that, that you're doing things differently. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I have gone from, you know, in my career, really overthinking production, thinking that things need to be highly produced, which takes <coughs> unbelievable amounts of time to get set up mm -hmm. and technical skills. Quite frankly, I don't have. I mean, I'm sitting on a, you know, I'm sitting on a uh, on a cell phone right now, leaned up against a Lysol, uh, you know, leaned up against a Lysol, uh, you know, wipe uh, container. And it's like, that's about as technical as I get, here, you know, if my, if my, you know, big cameras, all this kind of stuff. And I, but trust me, I've bought it all. I've bought it all. But it's like, here I am in 2024 on my cell phone, leaned up against a Lysol container. Uh, and it, it, it's just where we're, it's never worked better, you know, than just, <laughs> getting it the hell out there. I think also money loves speed. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of truth in speed of implementation. Um, how do you balance quantity with quality in terms of your content, you know, spending too much time on a video 
versus getting the, the the amount of videos out that you need to stay present in people's in, in people's feeds. Yeah, I just really try to, like I said, not overcomplicate it. Um, I want to put out good quality content, but I don't want to overcomplicate it. So I'm trying to do the best quality that I can while also making good use of my time, obviously, because I have kids and all the things. But I feel like that's where setting out that two hours a day to, you know, sit down and edit your videos, caption your videos, have them ready for the day before, kind of having that schedule. So I'm not waking up scrambling, trying to get a video ready to post at 830 in the morning when my kids are running around crazy. I just think having that time management and having a, a set plan to put out the best quality content that you can, I think that's that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, what else, what else has been helpful for you? What else has been, has worked well for you in time, in terms of your marketing and or lead generation, anything in terms of your, 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 your free giveaways in terms of generating leads, you know, there's, there's, there's kind of three main important parts of, of online marketing. There's audience building. So you can actually have an audience to drive traffic somewhere there's building an email list and having something to give people in exchange for the email. And then there's converting that list or those, those leads into actual buyers. Is there anything that stands out for you in, in one of those three areas that also has worked well that we haven't touched on maybe in terms of turning your audience into actual leads or, or something, for example? Yeah, I feel like the, the free ebook is huge for people not only because you are giving them something, but I feel like it's that first step when they, you know, they come upon your page, they see what you're offering. They, that free ebook is that first step just to, to dive in, to see if it's even something that they're interested in because it may not be. So I feel like offering that free ebook is that first step for people to see if it's even something that they'd like to do or pursue. So having that free, that free offer, and then obviously following up in the email list, I think that's huge for people because they can see, you know, exactly the breakdown of what you're doing, if it's something for them, and it may not be. Mm. Have you, um, have you worked on your copywriting skills and found that to be a, a, you know, a useful, a good use of your time to, you know, it's not all about uh, it's not all about video. This is one of the things that was kind of reversed for me when I started 13 years ago. There wasn't as much of an emphasis on video. Short form video was certainly wasn't around. So you really had to be on your A game in terms of writing, you know, in terms of your copy. How has that played a part or what has stood out to you about improving those copywriting skills and or how they're different from what you learned in English class or, uh, you, you know, what, what comes up for you around that? Yeah, I feel like I've gotten better with, with words, not only telling my story, but just using words in a way that can encourage people, inspire people and lead people in the right direction. It's something that I've really never done before but now with my email marketing running it's it's something that i'm trying to really work on and improve daily because that's where your conversions are made i mean most times people aren't going to buy the first time they see you it's really following up with those leads in that email campaign and using your words to lead people and encourage people and inspire it's it's really it is a learned skill i will say but it's something that i work on daily well, you had talked about that in your last job was just becoming a better communicator, realizing that you could communicate. I mean, you almost talked about that like something that you weren't really sure about because you're just a small Tom farm girl, didn't really know that you had. Do you think that a lot of people have hidden skills that are just untapped because they haven't really refined them or used them? Oh, absolutely. I think we are our biggest critics. We are the only ones that hold ourselves back. There's so much potential in each of us, and we just have to let it shine. We have to give ourselves the opportunity to let it shine. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. That's, that's you know, some of the most successful online marketers I've met over the years are not the people with extravagant degrees or that were called extremely smart in school. 
um, or even who had, you know, great jobs, a lot of times they, and that's what we see in Legendary, is that we see, you know, really, really average people, really ordinary people who, when they get in that right environment, I've always called it the right information from the right person or people in the right environment. And um, it's just, you know, I, I think as I've talked to most of them, they're blown away by what the, they're capable of or what the potential is or what they've accomplished. And I think if you're listening to this and you're sitting on the sidelines and you're doubting yourself, you need to explore your potential. You need to refine your potential. If you don't use it, you will eventually lose it. It's in there. I've always said from the beginning, we're not here to complete you. I don't want to be your guru. You already have everything inside of you that you need to succeed. You just have to go and mine it. It's gold. You have to find it. It's in the dirt. Yes, the dirt. It's buried under your limiting beliefs. You have to get your fingernails dirty. It's, it's metaphorically speaking, but it's in there. And the way to find it is, as you've talked about, Kelsey, practicing. Practicing and realizing, oh, damn, nailed that one. Feeling pretty good about myself today. And it is a war. You win the battles and you lose the battles. Some days are better than others. Some days you feel like crap about what you created. You post it anyways. <laughs> Or you, right, you don't hold back, you, you keep going, and sometimes you'll have people who are, um, you'll have a whole flood of people who give you positive feedback, and, and that's when you will realize, oh, damn, you know, have you been surprised, Kelsey, how by people, uh, but by the way that people have responded to you, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, now here you are, as some would call you, an influencer, uh, people are looking up to you, looking to you for answers and solutions and advice and following what you say and being inspired by you. Have you been surprised by that? And, and what has that done for your confidence? Yeah, it's it's a very surreal feeling. I mean, some days I, I still I pull up my Instagram page and I think to myself, like how I almost have 100,000 followers, like how how did this happen? Like, what is life right now? But it's, it's very encouraging to have people look up to me. I don't, I don't feel like I've ever been somebody that people looked up to, but I've got people in my DMs daily asking me, you know, what I'm doing and how are you so confident and all these things that I'm like, you just have to do it. The first step is just starting. And then from there, showing up every day, even when you don't want to, when you're sick, when you're tired, when you're discouraged, you have to show up for yourself because nobody is going to do it for you. So it's just, it's been such a game changer to have people that are just wanting to learn from me and looking to me for inspiration. It's, it's been amazing. Well, good for you. You deserve it. You <laughs> Thank deserve you. And you've delivered incredible value to us this morning here. I'm inspired. The comments are coming in for you. Uh, showed Kelsey some love. We're going to bring this in for a landing here. Uh, it's just been a pleasure to speak to you and learn about what it's been like for you, the good, bad, the ugly. Thank you for being honest and, sh and sharing all the parts. And I know that's also important to you and your business is, uh, you know, letting people know, preparing them for their journey of whatever they're going to pursue. It happens right now to be you're in the wealth niche, but um, you, you're just, uh, you're, you're really a, um, uh, you're really a, a shining example of, of what is possible and the right ways to do things. And so thank you so much for your time today. Come back and see me, keep yeah. me posted journey here in the next couple of months. And okay. um, <laughs> thanks for letting us be a part of your, your, uh, your journey. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. All right, my friends, uh, you can find Kelsey over on Instagram at Simple Wealth with Kells. That's K-E-L-S, Simple Wealth with Kells. 
If you want to get started with our 15-day online business builder challenge, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll, E-N-R-O-L-L. Um, start with our 15-day challenge. You know, eat the appetizer. See if it, it resonates with you. See if this, what you learn in there makes sense to you, if it's something that you want to pursue and integrate that education and run with it. We have other uh, flagship courses that we teach and do live coaching and workshops in updated and uh, advanced curriculum in our um, uh, business blueprints, which are the core four courses that teach those core four business models. Or come to an event, come to one of our masterminds, learn in person, interact with us, ask questions, um, sit in, in, in uh, uh, small groups, uh, Q&As. Uh, live presentations. Um, it's it's really a, a wonderful experience, no matter where you start. And um, and we appreciate the opportunity to be a part of all of your journeys and uh, help you to get started to learn these skills that everybody should know and learn in 2024. And and I say this, I'll say this as I've said it so many times before: learn these skills, whether you learn them here or somewhere else, because they're not going away. These are skills that level the playing field. These are skills that, um, that, 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 that people are using to be able to, um, you know, have a, a supplement their, their, their income, to be able to increase the quality of their lives, to participate in the online economy. You know, you don't have to, uh, we don't have to, uh, you know, uh, you know, be prepared for factory jobs and um, take on, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt um, in order to get a job where somebody then pays us. Uh, and, and um, you know, we have to spend tons of time away from our family and then we get, you know, tossed away um, when they no longer need us anymore. Th this is this is something that is imperative um, for us to, to at least know about. Right. And I really think they should have taught entrepreneurship in school just as much uh, in independent skills, just as much as they have prepared us for um, these jobs uh, that are so needed uh, in society. Unfortunately, um, the American dream uh, oftentimes starts out with a lot of credit card debt and a lot of student loan debt. And that's not fair to a lot of our young people. Uh, and so anyways, uh, as all that's important is that you have the information and that you have the option, right? You do what you want with that information. It's not that this is better or that's better. It's just that you have the option to pursue what you want. And that's what our 15 day online business builder challenge does. It gives you the option to learn about it at a low price to where you can get your feet wet and then if you want to enroll in some of our higher education to take it seriously for more accountability, wonderful. If not, no, no problem as well. Uh, no, no additional purchases are necessary to get value out of any other of our courses. And so we would love to serve you as, as much as you would like to be served and helped. Um, regardless, we will see you back here tomorrow for another episode of Wake Up Legendary. My name is Dave Sharp, signing out, and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. All right, my friends, get out of here. Peace.